welcome to another episode of The Global Game Pod, where we focus on one thing and one thing only, and that's football. What a goal from Ronaldo! It is absolutely magnificent! It is David Becker! With Coach Rudy and friends, this is Global Game Pod. Let's do it. Yo, 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 what's happening, people? Welcome to another episode of the Global Game Pod, brought to you by CKB Interiors. As always, if you need a kitchen or a bedroom, you know what to do. Right, my guest for today, this guy on the screen, some of you will recognize him, some of you, my best mate will 100% recognize him, uh, because he's a... (laughs) He's a fully fledged Bolton Wanderers fan. Don't ask me why. No, <laughs> Don't ask me. Why. He's a Bolton Wanderers international. I'm sorry, he's a Bolton Wanderers footballer. He's an ex youth international player for England, which is massive. Um, he is Jacob Mellis. Jacob, welcome to the Global Game Pod, man. What's going on? You okay? I'm good, bro. I'm good. How are you, man? Thanks for coming on. Yeah, no, nah, not too bad. Not too bad. Surviving. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's where I want to start, first and foremost, man. How how you been during this during this uh, weird period of time? Um, I had a game for so long. How you been coping, man? Yeah, it's, it's the same for everyone, I suppose. But like uh, with with um, like running and stuff uh, every day on your own and stuff, like, it gets tough. But it's uh, it's a new one, but missing the football badly, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, I've, I heard that there's talks going on at the moment. Um, any any news for us? Are, are we going to get football back on this season, or is that we done for? <laughs> I think we're we're the same as everyone else. You know, we're waiting to hear information through through like the captain captain uh, liaises with the PFA and stuff like that. They'll give us the information, but yeah, we're just waiting like everyone else see see what's going to happen. <laughs> It's a, it's a proper weird time at the moment, isn't it? I mean, for mm. us guys, the season's is finished. Obviously, at the national league level, we're done. Um, yeah. So I think we're just waiting for. League one, league two, and above to make decisions. So we know what's going on promotion and relegation from our side as well. So yeah, everything's just up in the air, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's it's strange times. Obviously, everyone's thinking are we gonna are they gonna get relegated, promoted? So it's it's just uh what, just literally a waiting game. What about from your personal perspective? Because if I read correctly, you you're at Bolton to the end of the season. Yeah. Um, so in terms of your contracts and stuff, is has anything been discussed on that or? Um, I think literally, this is, I think nearly all of our squads are contract. So we're just literally waiting for the for the um, FA to decide um, what's happening with the season. Is going to continue? Is it not? And then from there, the club will make um, their decisions of what, what's happening. Oh, sweet, sweet. So that's all right then. Um, but yeah, so like I do with pretty much all, all my footballer guests, uh, most of them are, have had careers in the pro game and are now playing non-league. But for yourself, you are still a professional footballer. So it's a little bit different for me. Um, but I always like to start right at the beginning um, and where football first started for you. So how old you were and yeah. where you played and, and, and at a grassroots level what you were doing. So a little bit of insight into that first, please. Um, I was like, I think six, six or seven. Um, got into football. I think my friend was, he was playing for like a local team and um, he invited me to go go train. And then, um, so I just used to go with him to train and stuff like that. And then, um, uh, the, the manager there is called Pat, uh, old Irishman. Uh, he, he was like, wow, like saying to my dad, oh, he needs to, you know, he needs to come and play every week and this, that, the other. My dad was like, my dad weren't really feeling it, to be fair. He was like, nah, nah, he needs to read books. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, uh, nah, nah, he needs to read books. He, he's not playing football or football. And then um, he came to see me uh, play and he was like, Phew, actually, <laughs> this is Joe. Like, we could, like, he's, he, he obviously enjoys it and he's good at it. So, from there, it was just like playing it, enjoying it. We used to go to like um, tournaments in the summer. Okay. Like five-a-side tournaments and stuff like that. They used to be my favourite days, to be fair. Mm. So, like, was it just a natural talent right from the beginning? Yeah, it was just natural. Everywhere I went, I had the ball with me. Um, just loved football. Everything to do with football. I loved it. Um, so, it was just literally, yeah, it just went like that, really. And how long how long did you spend on the, like, the grassroots scene? Or, obviously, you clearly had talent. So, did you get... Were you... Was there interest straight away? Did you get picked up straight away? Or did you actually spend a few years in, in grassroots first? Um, I think I was like seven. It was like seven to, until 10. Uh, I was playing with Vernon. And then from when I went to uh, City Boys, like Nottingham Boys, okay. uh, from there when I was 10, that's when um, Sheffield United picked me up. Uh, so I think I went, I went to a game against Workshop and uh, like we turned up late because my dad was late. <laughs> So it turned up late and I came on a half time and then I uh, chipped the keeper. And then from there, the Chef Night Scout um, 
he was like, oh, we wanted to come down. So it was, it was from there. So I think I spent three years um, at Vernon and then uh, went to Sheffield United from there. Wicked. So you don't like, because I always have this conversation with people because everyone's got a different journey. Do you understand? Some people start as young as five and six. Some yeah. people don't start at all. You know, they've never been in the academy system. Obviously, for yeah. you, you were in the academy system. How much did that actually help you being in the academy system? Or was it more a uh, hindrance? Like, for your, from your own personal perspective? Like, yeah. If, I, I mean, it's very hard, probably hard to remember your thoughts when you're 10 years old. Mm. But how was that feeling for you? Like, did you know the magnitudes of what you were doing? Uh, if, I tr- if I try and think back, it was more like, um, at the time, I think when I was 10, I didn't, even, I didn't know who Sheffield United were. So... It wasn't a thing like that. It's like obviously the team was Nottingham Forest, so I think they were a bit interested in me to go um, train. But my dad heard bad stuff about their academy and stuff like that. Um, so when we went to Sheffield United, from there it was just um, I really enjoyed it. The people were nice, um, and I think after like my first two training sessions, they wanted to sign me. So from there, I didn't know the the scale of it, but I just knew that it was it was something good. <laughs> yeah, of course, hundred percent. Obviously, you would do. You got people around you and stuff like that. But you going back to like obviously your dad saying to you. At six, no, nope, you're reading books, you're reading books, and then you yeah. know. How quickly did that transition happen for him? Where he he thought, wait a minute, you know what? This might be a career pathway. Um, pretty much straight away, you know. In terms of, he wasn't one of them dads that like um, he's on the sidelines telling me I oh, do this, do this. It was just natural for me. So he was more like um, once he knew that I was into it and stuff like that, he was like buying me boots every, the latest pair of Preds every year and stuff like that. So it was just, it was just stuff like that. He used to, obviously, he likes football. He loves football as well. So for me to like it as well, he, he knew that I was football mad. So from there, it was, just, it was just like a natural, natural thing, really. And did he take the foot off the gas when it came to your education or was that still top priority? <sighs> no, it was not really. You know, <laughs> no, it was more, I was always okay at school, never like really good really bad it was I was always in between so it was like a I think once I started progressing through the academy more and more and more I think my school probably took took a, a, a turn for the worst with that because obviously we was traveling from Nottingham to um, Sheffield every Tuesday sometimes Wednesday Thursday Saturdays and Sundays so yeah. it was a lot of it was a lot of traveling for my dad um, so I think school work probably took a bit of a, a, a back and step in, in terms of that traveling were you were you uh, on day release uh, we was we was on Wednesdays, okay. Um, but then I, when I got to I think fifteen, that's when I took my schoolwork to Sheffield. Um, so I had to do my schoolwork in Sheffield and um, train with the youth team full time. So, so it was that, a couple like, of years. You, you moved you moved out of of home as a fifteen year old basically. Yeah, yeah. I went to live in Diggs in um, Sheffield. That was a good time. Um, and obviously, I could train every day. And well, I was supposed to be doing my schoolwork as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I hear that. You know what? Every time I speak to a player, when they say digs, they 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 light up. They're like, oh yeah, digs. That was my favorite time. Uh, yeah, football. it was good. Um, because obviously you got a little bit of independency there, but you're still young, so you you could probably still get away with a little bit of murder then as well. <laughs> <laughs> try to try to, but like the, the 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 group of boys there, um, like the youth team there, they had a good we had a good team, um, and they looked after me a lot. To be honest, um. Like helped me with loads of things, so it, I felt I felt I felt at home there. To be honest, wicked. So like in this time, obviously from ten to fifteen, what you got you got picked up by Chelsea at sixteen years old, yeah. Yeah. But from ten to sixteen, those six years where you are at Sheffield United, was there ever a time where you thought, you know what, this ain't for me, man? I don't, I really don't like this. Or were you enjoying it the entire time through that you didn't, it, it it didn't bother you at all? That that's the thing, you know. Sometimes sometimes I look back and I wish that I did have um, some adversity in terms of someone didn't want me or it was, it was, a, it was, everything was just natural flowing. So I thought in my mindset, everything was just what, this is what's supposed to happen. You know what I mean? I never had like, obviously I hear stories when people get released or they might not have got a contract and stuff like that. But it, with me, it was always like, I'm um, just playing sailing to be honest. Um, sometimes I wish that it was the other way, but obviously it was just, it was just a natural, natural thing. Well, but that's, 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 this, this is it. This is what I mean. Uh, Cause I think a lot of times on these, on these kind of platforms, people are looking for that, that story, you know, that adversity and then you yeah. up the adversity <laughs> and you go and make it. I like it. I like the fact that you, you didn't have it. I like the fact that it was all <laughs> plain sailing. But when we say plain sailing, I think we've got to be quite... It's not silver. It's, it's not like you've been born a silver. No. Sailing. No, 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 no. no. You understand? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, of course, of course. 
but at the time I didn't obviously I loved football so I didn't really feel like when I say plain sailing I don't mean it wasn't hard because obviously it was hard you've got you've got I don't know how many players in the academy and stuff to be the best um stuff like that but it was just like the thing was it was coming like uh, I think everyone could see what I had before I could see it, if that makes sense yeah 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 um so when they were making a big fuss I wasn't really it's not like how it is nowadays in terms of um if a big team wants you um, everyone makes you hear about it on the news and stuff like it wasn't like that it was just like the parents will know mm. the academy manager will know the club will know it just it was just like that so I, was, I wasn't really getting like a big head or anything like that what about in terms uh, of your friend cycle though like I'm sure they started to get they, they started to hear the noise a little bit so did that affect yeah. you in any way you know them making all the noise um, at, at school obviously like we had the school team and uh, one of my friends played for Nottingham Forest and I played for Sheffield United so it was a it, obviously people used to love us, but uh, me and him. Um, so it was like a battle. We played against each other a couple of times. Mm. So from that point of view, I knew like the PE teachers treated you a bit differently and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so from that point of view, it was just it, it was good. It was good to be fair. Was it a case of you got away with doing stuff like gymnastics and that stuff you didn't want to do because you were you, you were playing that shit with you? Yeah, no, they sometimes they uh, they let me get away with a few <laughs> things. To be fair, when it was football, I, obviously I played, but yeah, I can imagine, I can imagine that. If I was a PT, I'd be doing the same. You look after the asset at the end of the day. <laughs> you need him to be good at three o'clock on a on a, on a weekday yeah. so you can beat your rival school, innit? So yeah, that's that's the thing. That's the thing. But then obviously in this time as well, you get called up for the international team or does that happen after you get to Chelsea? If I remember, um, it was under 15, so you would be at Sheffield yeah, United. Under 15. Yeah, I was at Sheffield United, yeah. Um, I think we went to, uh, I went to like a, a training camp, there was like 40 players, I think we played like games against each other and stuff like that. Mm. So players from all over and that's when I started to uh, like see different players from different clubs and stuff like that and spend time with them, yeah. see their abilities as well. And there was a lot of good players to be fair. Any, any, stand, any standard household names we might know of right now? When yeah, there was a lot, you know, uh, Wilshire. Uh, but the one that stood out back then when we went to that the trial thing was um Jose Baxter. Okay, um, yeah, that heard of him. He, his talent was crazy to be fair. Like he was he was like a uh, young Wayne Rooney, so mm. he was he was really good. And it, but it was just lo- there was just loads of good players. But how's how's that feeling? Like obviously you're playing, you're do, you're doing your thing. Like you said, you're you're working hard, but it's plain sailing. You understand? You you are at the top of your game. Year on year, year in year out, yeah. And obviously, the national team comes calling, and I know sometimes people don't take light to the youth national team, but I do. And as a football fan, I think any football fan would do because it's your national team. That is your age gap. Yeah. That's the age you can play at. Everyone wants to represent the national team at some point. What is that feeling like when when they say that it, they they want you in in a training camp or they want you in a squad? Well, I was I was buzzing to be fair. That's when I that's when I first started like thinking like, woof, this is this is good. Um, like we used to, we we had a victory shield, so obviously you get caught up in the squad. But it wasn't like um how it is now. We don't have the technology, so it was like a I used to have to wait like on a Friday before the squad was thing, and yeah. I'm gone um like an IT lesson, check the squad to see if I'm in it <laughs> or not. Uh, so it was coming up like that. Um, but no, it was, that was exciting to be fair. That's 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 brilliant. That must have been like such a good experience for you. Definitely, and, definitely. And, and it must have like you were already boosted but it must have just given you that extra boost to go and be in that squad week in week out if you get what I mean yeah no definitely we was playing um, every game you play you know there's, there's, there's England scouts there watching so they're seeing how you're doing how you're progressing so it's an extra like thing I didn't see it as pressure I see it as like a, it was exciting to, to, to show off basically show, you, yeah. show your talents really that thing. and during your academy lifetime, did, did did or during your academy life, I should say, did you find your position being changed by the coaches, or were you kind of like a player who was just so good at his position that they just kept you there for the foreseeable future? Yeah, I was always playing midfield. Uh, probably when I was at um, City Boys, when I first got scouted, I was playing like striker, just okay. just off the off the front man. Um, but then when I went there, I moved to um, centre mid. So. Um, now, from when I went to Sheffield United, I was always um, centre mid. Was that box to box, or you play in the hole, or you play the centre? Uh, box to box, but more more attacking than defending. <laughs> okay, yeah, obviously we all want to attack it. <laughs> it's probably attacking. Uh, so now is the big one because the yeah, Sheffield United, I'm sure they want to offer you a scholar. Yeah. <laughs> and when does it start getting 
serious for you? And when do you start realizing that you know what Chelsea are actually interested? Uh, it was like uh, basically Sheffield United offered me a back then they didn't really offer um, professional contracts to like they, they just gave him a two year scholar or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But they offered me like a one year scholar and a three year pro. Oh wow! So, like, everyone, so obviously everyone in the age group and stuff like that are thinking, what the hell? Like no one's been offered that type of thing. But then they kind of like messed around with the contract a little bit. Um, so that left the door open for other other teams to to come in. Um, I think like Man U, Liverpool, uh, Villa, and Chelsea were the were the main ones. Um, so that so the longer that year was going on, it was more like I was going to leave more than mm. more than more than stay. I did like you. You just said you just hit the big hitters there: Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea. <laughs> Let's just, just name throw them in there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have conversations with these clubs? Did you get invited down to their training grounds? Did, did, did you do any of these things or did you have your mind set on Chelsea? Um, at the time, it was, um, you, it was illegal to do that. So we couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't go and see uh, like the training ground and stuff. Like okay. Chelsea so Sheffield United were trying to, still trying to keep me. And, you know, yeah, like yeah. Neil Warnock, he was, going, he, was, he, was, he was going crazy. So <laughs> I don't think I could have done that. But I, I did meet, obviously I met Chelsea. Um, obviously, you know they did uh, dodgy dealings and stuff like that. <laughs> so, I met them. I think when I was allowed to, to be fair, but they were the yeah. main ones that were. You know, they travelled down to Nottingham and Frank Arneson, um travelled down and met in a hotel and stuff like that. So they were the main ones. And uh, I went to Village Training Ground as well, but I decided to go to go to Chelsea. That's mad because obviously you're young. You're still only sixteen years old. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're in the know, but you're not in the know at the same time. Uh, you just want to go and you just want to play your football. But yeah. I'm sure you then start to hear that the price tag. I'm sure that that comes into <laughs> your mindset. Do you understand? Like being yeah. a million pound player, that's a, for a 16 year old kid, that's a big deal. Okay, yeah. what anyone says. <laughs> what was that like? Like, what is it like to be known as a million pound player? It was, it was in my England age group, it was probably. It was normal, to be honest, because we had like we had a group of players like um, John Bostock, um, Dean Parrott. I think they, I don't know how much Bostock went for, maybe two million, and Dean Parrott two million as well. So it was kind of like normal back then, really. Obviously, the players that were at big clubs already, they were staying at their yeah, yeah. club. The ones that were at like maybe championship teams or low uh, Premiership teams were getting bought. So that was probably like normal, really. It wasn't really like a and I feel like in the, the year before that, Chelsea paid 2.5 for like Michael Woods, Tom Tywell. So it was kind of normal, but obviously not normal, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Like, normal in a sense where it's, it's happening all the time. But from you, from a personal perspective, did that add any pressure to you? Did you think, did you ever like think, right, this club just paid a million pounds for me. Now I've got to deliver the goods. Um, no, not really. Like they, they used to make, um, there's a scout, Lee Cong- Congleton. Uh, he, he's the one who scouted me as well. He used to make jokes like when I after my first year, he was like, "Oh, come on, we need like we need you in the first team. Uh, we signed you instead of Aaron Ramsey. Aaron Ramsey's playing first team now." <laughs> so it, it was stuff like that, just little jokes. But um, no, I never really felt the pressure. No. But what about when 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 they are making jokes like that? Because you know sometimes, as a young person, as a man, you you can brush it aside, whatever. But as a young person, you when you hear a comment like that, even in a joking capacity, where yeah, come on, mate, Ramsey's in the first team. What are you doing? Yeah. I mean, it could go one of two ways. It could egg you on and it could be like, well, all right, man, I'll show you. I'll be in that first team before you know it. <laughs> yeah. We can go the other way as well, where you think, oh, what's he doing that I'm not? Yeah, no, it, it was a thing because obviously he used, to say, he used to say that a lot to me, like, oh, we signed you instead of Ramsey. Look what Ramsey's doing. Uh, so I used to think that obviously Arsenal are giving more opportunities to the youngsters. Mm. Uh, so it's probably, it's probably more what club he's at rather than what he's doing or, or whatever. But obviously he's, a, he's an unbelievable player. So. And so when you signed, when you when you did sign with Chelsea, I, I assume they offered you a pro straight away, um, same as Sheffield United did, or did you have to do the scholarship yeah. first, or and then get a pro? Um, basically, you, everyone has to do a scholarship. So, yeah. Um, did the, did the scholarship, and when I was seventeen, on my seventeenth birthday, that's when I signed the professional contract. Brilliant. And you were still in the England setup at this time as well. You're still playing. Yeah, yeah. With, the, with the national team, so I guess you're getting used getting used to that feeling now. That you know you're. You're a million pound player. You're at Chelsea. You're still play, representing your national team. I mean, the world's your oyster yeah. at this point. 
you, you yeah. probably felt you probably felt like you you couldn't be defeated really, could you? <laughs> yeah, no, it's true because like even I think Chelsea were getting there was a uh, obviously Frank Noble, um, Adam Coombs, who was in that England team, who was at Chelsea. Mm. They were they were trying to persuade me to come to uh, Chelsea all the time. Do you know what I mean? So obviously every every England trip we went, they were like, oh come, you need to come, you need to come, and then. Um, I think when I decided, I think I went to a FA Cup final. I think, it, or maybe Carling Cup, Chelsea versus Tottenham. That's when I decided. I, I thought, oh yeah, I, I want to join. Wicked. Now that's that's mad. see stuff like this is like very good to know because you're obviously a young man at this time, you know, and you're getting pressures obviously from the likes of your England teammates. <laughs> yeah. you, there probably were other players at other clubs who are saying the same thing to you as well. Yeah, and you've got definitely. this big. You've got this big decision to make, but at the same time, how do you know to make that decision? Do you understand? I mean, like, I know you're young. Yeah. Is there is there a support network behind you that's guiding you through this decision, or is this decision entirely yours to make? No, it was it was more like uh, when they showed the numbers. No, I'm joking. <laughs> 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 no, it was like a. It wasn't like a. It wasn't like a um, decision like. It wasn't like we sat down as a family and said, oh, shall we, shall we do it? Shall we not do it? It was more or less like my dad and my mum were just like, wherever you want to play, wherever you feel is the best place for you, um, you should go. And I remember I went to Villa and Nathan D'Alfonso, he was, he was playing uh, for Villa at the time. Obviously, he's my England teammate as well. And he was saying certain things about the academy and how strict it is and stuff like that. Um, and I went there and they obviously they gave me the heart rate. Um, to do like pre-season running and stuff like yeah. that and I just I just didn't have a good uh, good feeling mm. so I went away from there straight away and I said to my dad oh, I don't want to sign there and how good is it because obviously you have youngsters here who who they get to a point in their career where they 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 can't choose they they have to make a decision whether they want to play pro be it at no disrespect to a, a league two side or league, league one side yeah. or they don't play pro you know that so all that work they put in from six, seven years old has come down to this. They don't really have a choice. How good was it for you to have a choice in that sense? Um, I think it was good. It was good and bad, to be honest. Because like even um, I read something not long ago. Obviously, it's an old article now where the, um, the chairman of Sheffield United, he was saying, you know, if Jacob Mellis stayed here, he would have been a better person and a, and a better player. He would have been playing championship at 16 years old. Yeah, um, stuff like that. So you can never know how the how it's gonna go. Obviously, if I didn't have the choice, I would have been at Sheffield United. So yeah. that obviously would have took it, um, like obviously the the road, the course it would have took. Yeah. But obviously, I suppose it is better to have choices rather than than not. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Because obviously, if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about hindsight, then we could talk about hindsight in both ways. If yeah, if no if no other offers come in, and the only choice is Sheffield United, then that article is null and void in a sense because. Do you, yeah. really, do you really play in the first team as a 16-year-old? Yeah. I mean, isn't, it, isn't it a factor that because the big boys are interested? You can say that. Uh, yeah. you, can, you can say that. You understand? <laughs> it's, it's, that's yeah. probably one of the only reasons. Um, if they wanted to put you in the first team at 16, you would have been in the first team at 16. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So, obviously, at Chelsea, um, you don't make any league appearances and stuff, but how close were you to breaking into that first team because I can imagine we end up Abramovich era now yeah so they're buying yeah. left right and centre how difficult yeah. was that being a youth player at Chelsea and trying to break into that first team um, I think probably when I went when I first signed obviously they told me I'll be with the reserve straight away hmm. uh, stuff like that so I think when I kind of got there obviously they were telling me this is the plan uh, when I kind of got there it was the, the plan changed a bit and obviously, I'm seeing, in my mind, I was thinking like, oh, there is so many players here. There's so many players. There's, there's, there's a queue. So they can't just sign you and put you in front of this guy. Mm. That guy's going to be, he's, got, he's going to be annoyed. So it's kind of like I had to do my time with the youth team, show my talent. And then obviously, I can bypass certain players. Um, but straight away, it wasn't like that. It was just basically, I was just like a, any one of their players type thing. Yeah. Obviously, the, the the price tag and stuff like that, you would think, oh, they're going to push him. But they were buying players left, right and centre. So it was like, we all just went there and then obviously try and improve and, and, and get your way up the ranks like everyone else. And then obviously, you do make a one Champions League appearance. Um, yeah. 
obviously that's a massive deal itself. So, traveling with the <laughs> traveling with the first team squad and whatnot. Mm. Did you ever travel in a, in a league game with the squad, or was that your? Yeah, one of- no, no, I was on the that season. Um, we had a. I was on the the bench the season before that. Um, mm. I remember Ray Wilkins called me up and he was like, "Are oh, you on the bench tomorrow?" And I was just like, Phew. "I remember I called my mum. I was like, what the hell?'" Because uh, it was just random out mm. of thin air. Um, I was on the bench against Everton, I think. Um, but I didn't come on. And then the next season, there was a group of players. Uh, there was like me, Josh McEachern, Patrick Van Anho, Jeffrey Bruma, uh, Gail Kakuta. Yeah. We were on the bench um, quite a lot um, that season. And they, them like, made quite a few appearances. Um, so it was like a, a group of players. I think we didn't, we didn't sign any players that summer. Or we might sign one or two. So Who's the manager? Injuries. Um, Ancelotti. Ancelotti. So this is just after the Champions League final, yeah? Uh, ch- 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 yeah, it must have been. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah it was after the Champions League final. Yeah, what, is that the one where against Man United? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went to that game. I went to that game. <laughs> Why was that? Just on a sidebar. Obviously, we're talking about you. I don't know. We're gonna go back to you, but being at Chelsea at the time, and obviously you're in and around the first team. You see the first team. Um, you're, I'm sure you see them at training and stuff because that's how yeah. these clubs work. Coming back from that, how was that? And this is gonna make me feel good because. Here's the actual memory, really, of us winning the Champions League. <laughs> oh, seriously, <laughs> yeah. Do, do you know what that that game that game was crazy? Because for me personally, in terms of oh, the academy, so the whole academy went to the game, mm. but it was like uh, we was all on uh, the plane and stuff like that. And then obviously when we touched down in Moscow, it was just raining. So the weather was crazy, and it was literally from the from on the way back from the stadium to the to the airport and stuff. It was every man for itself. Nobody knew where it was going. So imagine you got like I don't know fifty academy players just all around <laughs> Moscow. Like it was, it was. I remember it was just wet. I just, I just couldn't wait to get home. To be fair. Yeah. Obviously, we lost, we lost as well. So it was, it was even worse. What was it coming back though? What was it, what, what was this atmosphere like back at Chelsea? <laughs> Everyone was gutted to be fair because obviously they had the chance when um, JT slipped mm. um, to win it, and um, obviously everyone, everyone was gutted. But I think we went back there. I don't know if it was the season after. I was on the bench when we played uh, Spartak Moscow away. I remember just making a big deal out of um, John Terry going back to the to that stadium, obviously where he, where he slipped and stuff like that. Mm. But yeah, nah, it was, it was well, a good the, the banter must still be fun, though. I mean, JT is a big man. I'm sure he can take the banter. But yeah, yeah no, I know. don't think <laughs> I don't think anyone mentioned that. <laughs> Nobody mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> this is all subject. But all right, so what then makes you make a decision to leave Chelsea? Because obviously you've 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 signed, you've signed for big money, you've spent your like you said, you had to bide your time. You yeah. started you were training with the first team, you're called being called to the bench, you ain't getting game time now. Yeah. Is that is that the reason why you, you have to go? It's it was it was basically like a cycle of events. Like um I was improving a lot under um Brendan Rogers. Um improving as a player, person and stuff like that. He he left. And then so that's se- so the season when I was on the bench a lot for the first half of the season, they offered me a new deal because my se- my deal was um ending at the end of the season. So I remember I was like, I don't want to sign. Because mm. if I'm not gonna get opportunities, I don't want to sign. And obviously my agent was saying, ah, oh, like what do you think? He's like, oh, I think you should my agent said they think you should sign the deal. Um, so I remember Frank Arneson, we, obviously we trained on the back pitches, so I'll be training with the reserves or whatever, and I see Frank Arneson waiting there. I'm thinking, I'm saying to my friend, oh, no, he's waiting for me. And he was just saying to me, like, Jacob, if you, do, if you don't want to sign, that's fine. You know, you won't play another game this season. Um, you, you can sign, go on loan to a championship team, and obviously when you come back, you're going to be with the first team. Um, so I was just like... In the end, it was a few weeks decision. In the end, I signed a new deal and then went on loan. It probably made sense. But looking back, maybe I should have just run my deal down and and joined another team. Mm. Does that does that affect a player like uh, being on loan? Because you you don't belong to you obviously belong to your parent club. Um, yeah. And I've never actually understood what a mindset of a player on loan is like. Because you're playing for this club and you're supposed to give them your hundred ten percent, but. Sh- in the back of your mind, you know you belong over there. It, uh, is it going? Is it like being a child again and being on trial all over again, but just at a different club? It was. It was. It was. I went on loan to Southampton when I was eighteen, so I had a loan before that loan, uh, and that wasn't right for me at all. Um, mm. 
Alan Pardew was the manager, I think. And um, they played me right midfield. Uh, and it just wasn't right. Like, I think Chelsea put in the contract, I have to start the first three games. So straight away, I thought in my head, in the second game, does this guy even want to play me type thing? Because um, in the second game, he brought me off at half-time. So I'm thinking, he's only abiding by the contract to start yeah. me. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't really want to start me. Um, so from then, I, I, that was a frustrating loan and I didn't play that much. We had some, we had some good players. Um, Southampton in League One, like yeah. Schneiderlin, Lalana, Lambert. They, they had a good squad. So, but that was a frustrating loan. And I think like, I made some silly decisions when I went there in terms of like going out too much when I wasn't playing and stuff like that. Um, but in the second loan at Barnsley, I felt good because obviously I've been, that's on the back of me being with the, the first team. Yeah. And Ancelotti, Ancelotti spoke to me and he said, he wants me to go out on loan and play some games and in the summer, I'm going to be with the first team like full time. So that was, a, that was, I had that ringing in my ear. So all I knew, I need to go there and, and play games and, and do well. And then when you come back, is that, is that true? Cause, or, or did he get sacked? Yeah, he got sacked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, literally. Um, he got, I came back and um, he was gone. I was like, what the? <laughs> they, I think they finished second in the league and um, yeah. yeah, he got sacked. I and remember that, I remember before. that. <laughs> so, it was, so I was just like, oh. And then uh, I think Villas Boas came and it just wasn't the same from there, to be honest. So you were still there when Lukaku signed? And yeah, yeah, Rom. Because yeah, I, yeah. I was at the unveiling of Lukaku at Cobham. Um, oh, I, did yeah. like a, I did like a little... Not internship, but it was like a competition thing where I wrote an article for the for a newspaper, and yeah. because of it, they sent me to a couple of press conferences, and that was one. It was Lukaku and Romeo's unveiling at the same day. Yeah. Um. So you were still there then? Yeah, yeah, still there. Yeah. Um. Rom came, Romeo. Yeah. Rom. Rom was. Rom was good. Like he was. Um. Obviously, I did. I didn't know a lot about him. To be obviously, he had a he had a big reputation. Mm. Um. When he came. He was, a, I think he's a couple of years younger than me, but he, straight away when you play with him, you can see that he's got the determination, the hunger to score goals. Because me as a midfielder, if I get the ball and I play it sideways or back, he's straight away saying, no, 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 no turn, look for me, play me in mm. and stuff like that. And you're thinking, oh, from a younger player, you're thinking, do you know what I mean? Because he, yeah. Obviously, he knew, he knew um, his abilities and stuff like that. And obviously, his goal scoring record speaks for itself. Yeah, 100%, 100%. But in terms for yourself, so... When does the time actually end at Chelsea then? So what, what makes that decision? Is it just seriously just a lack of game time that you think, you know what, now I have to go and crack on with my career now? It was, it was um, that season when Villas Boas was there was so mm. frustrating for me because, to be honest, like um, that season where younger players were going to train with the first team instead of me and stuff like that, and I was just frustrated. Uh, I remember I, I, and then when they needed numbers, they will call me over, I will train, and JT will be saying to me, are oh, you training well? Keep that's the standard you need to train every day but he just wasn't he, he didn't take me on tour and stuff like that so all the, the whole of that season I was playing reserves they wouldn't let me go on loan which I wanted to do because I wanted to play games so and then obviously it ended with the you know the smoke bomb um, incident oh yeah yeah I heard about um, that <laughs> yeah so that, that was the kind of the, the thing to say I had another year and a half on my contract but they was like you can leave now get paid up or you can stay and I, and I just thought at the time, I thought I need I need to get out of there and play play games. Can we get some clarification on this smoke bomb incident? Yeah, what actually <laughs> happened? Um, <laughs> Were you just messing around? Big... Were you just messing around? Yeah, it wasn't even a big deal. It was like um, it was like a uh, you know when you go to uh, paintball. Yeah, you get you get them fake smoke bomb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, I I didn't know what he did, so I pulled it and then I was like, oh, and then uh, chucked it, and then <laughs> obviously the fire alarm stuff went off. So it wasn't. A, they made it into a big deal um, in the paper and stuff like that, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a big deal. But did that? Did that? What the media did? Did that influence the decision Chelsea wanted to make? Oh, hundred percent. Because yeah, there was like they put. In, I remember they put in the paper like full scale evacuation, fire fire engines. <laughs> I was just like, no, there wasn't. Like, so it was literally the fire alarm went off. Everyone got out of the building, and went back in. It was, do you know what I mean? But yeah. they made it into some big. And obviously, I think around the time, I think Ash may, might have. Um, Shot that guy with a paint paintball gun. Okay, so that's what he was saying. Say that we have no discipline at Chelsea and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> so that made it into a big deal. Yeah, I guess it was just a bunch of youngsters messing around. But at the end of the day, it's yeah. not, that, not that deep. Um, yeah, it was. Obviously, you didn't go play Championship football. You've played a lot of Championship football. You've um, played League One. You've played League Two, and you're now bought on Wanderers. What? Yeah. 
in, in that time, like, how's the mind ch- mindset changed? Because obviously, as a young kid, this prospect, this price tag, all these clubs chasing you. And look, I'm not going to sit here for one second and say playing League One, League Two football, Championship football is a bad thing. I would, yeah. I would have killed to play at that level. You understand? <laughs> yeah. And there's plenty of youngsters out here that will kill to still play at that level. And not even just youngsters, even at National League level. I think every player at National League would, would do anything to get a contract in a League One, League Two club. Yeah. But obviously being at that status that you were, yeah. and going back to that, that childhood and that mindset where everything was plain sailing, you were the best all the time. Do you understand? Mm. So I know you say that you didn't really face adversity in your younger career. But yeah. Becoming an adult and becoming a professional, there seems to be more adversity there than you did in the younger days. Do you think that's one of yeah. the reasons why you said yourself that it would have been better if you faced some adversity when you were young? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I would have learned how to handle it better and, and, and stuff like that rather than doing certain things. Mm. I could have got back on track and, and stuff like that. So it probably was, it was probably like, whoa, what's happening now type thing. Um, when, when, when that started happening so I feel like yeah that's the reason why I said when I was younger probably adversity would have been better because I would have, I would have known how to, to prepare for it type thing yeah 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 100% obviously it's not your fault you know some people will say well done to you for not having any adversity well done for you being the best <laughs> all the time you know that's, that's great stuff <laughs> in itself but it, it's one of those things isn't it like you just don't know how things are going to pan out but again the yeah. mindset because I, I keep having these conversations with footballers and it's, it's the mindset that always comes right to the forefront you know, yeah, talent, definitely. hard work, all of that stuff seems to be just minuscule. Yeah, and it always seems to be the mindset that is, that's, that's so important. How, how important would it have been for you? Or just looking back, how important is that mindset for, for yourself? Oh, ma- massive. Um, I think if I had a, obviously, if I had a certain times in my career where I've done silly things or not been focused, that's, that's the reason why. Well, it's, it's probably better to speak to someone else about me rather than me, if that, if that makes sense. Mm, and obviously, okay. I don't want to uh, blow my own trumpet and, and stuff like that. But I feel like if I, if I made better decisions and stuff like that, I would have been playing at a, a higher level. Um, yeah, but I mean, it sounds like it. Just knowing, just knowing your story and not, knowing where you were, look, it's, it, not everyone is going to get bought for a million pounds by a top four club, you know, <laughs> Champions League finalists. It's, it's not going to happen. So yeah. I don't think you are blowing your own trumpet. I think you, you know you were good enough to play at yeah. side or in the Premier League I think you know that and yeah. do you look back at it and have a little bit of sense of regret in a sense where you didn't get Premier League appearances yeah no definitely because obviously when I obviously when I moved to Barnsley in the Championship that was mainly to play games in the Champ to get back to the Premiership a mm-hmm. Premiership club type thing and then I feel like when I the first season when I was there I did well got a lot of assists a double figure assist um, I finished like top joint top goal scorer and like um, that summer I thought oh, I'm going to get a move but because of the previous stuff that's happening people thinking oh is he a madman he... so I think that they always had that question mark over me mm. so I feel like my talent was never getting it wasn't just like oh everyone was like yeah we know he's a good player but what's his, what's his mindset like so that was always stopping me from getting moves I, f- I feel yeah and that 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 seems quite harsh in, in a sense because people are people's perception of you is based on articles and yeah definitely. hearsay definitely that, that? that's the thing because the, the managers that I've worked with who know me the best they always say to me he, he's no problem like but from the outside perception people will say oh he's a troublemaker this this but all the managers they, they're like he's, he's just a nice nice guy like he wouldn't doesn't cause me any any trouble mm. I'm sorry to hear that in a sense because obviously, but even now you're still doing your thing, you know, you're still playing, you're at Bolton yeah. Wanderers. What's that like? Because I know Bolton's been through hell. Um, what yeah. is that like? What is it like being there? Like, seriously, because you, you're um, playing catch up, you're playing catch up. We know you're playing catch up to stay in the league, yeah. Catch up, so it's 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 crazy because obviously they're bottom of League One, um, but it's like when I first came here to sign and stuff like that, and even the way they treat you, stuff like that, um, like that's, this, this, is a, this is a massive club. It's cool. like, it's, um, you know how it's run and stuff like that. They've got new owners now. So I feel like they'll be, they'll be back like up there again. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how long it will take it, but 
with the new owners and stuff like that. I think they'll get there. Yeah, hundred percent. And you enjoying your football now? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Obviously, with the I only played a few games for them before obviously the coronavirus um, stuff happened. So that was a, that was a bit um, frustrating because obviously I wanted to show what I can do and stuff like that. But um, no, nah, I was in, I was enjoying it. Yeah. You're only 29 years old. I say only because um, footballers seem to be just super athletes nowadays. Uh, <laughs> and you know, normally, you know, when you're younger, you look, everyone's always looking at that 30 age bracket. Yeah. Oh, 30. <laughs> that's the time for retirement. Now you're there. You, you're touching it. Does, does it feel like it or do you feel like you know I've still got a lot to give man no I, I still yeah no I do I do I feel like I can every manager I speak to or, and stuff like that they say to me you know you have to look after yourself and you still got the ability to play obviously my mind my main attribute is probably is not is not speed anyway so it's more um, brain and, and passing so I, I can I can do that so yeah that's, that sounds good I'm going to be following your journey from now 100% um, <laughs> I'm a fan now Top, man. Um, I don't know really if I'm going to support Ball Wanderers because just because <laughs> of the banter with my best mate, I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, I always give him a stick. I always give him aggro. But yeah, I'll definitely be following what you're doing. Now, Matt, <laughs> Top, man. If, you can, if you can give a message to a, the younger generation or even to a younger version of yourself, what would you, what would you say to a 10-year-old, you, an 11-year-old, you, knowing what you've been through, knowing the decisions you've made, the choices you've made? What advice would you give to yourself? I would say just the most uh, most important thing when you get a setback, just keep with the same focus, believe in yourself, type thing. Um, you know, find find stuff to rather than just for example, you get annoyed, you're not in the team, you're not rather than going out on a night out and or ex, like um, letting your hair down that way, <clears throat> do extra training, work harder. But I feel like the youngsters nowadays, I feel like. People complain and say they get a lot given to them and stuff, but I feel like they work they work harder than than obviously like my generation when we was used to. I feel like they do more extra work, um, play football more, uh, study the game more, and I feel like they're getting the benefits from that. So I think that the way the world's going, I think the young footballers know the the prize is what if they have two, three, four good games, they know the contracts they're going to get is just. Pfft. So I think they're more they're more focused, and I think. Um, it's good. It's good for them to be fair. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you, you when you put it like that, it actually does make sense because the younger generation. Because I have an academy, and the young generation is very determined. Um, yeah. Be it, it might not be always solely for the love of the game. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's the, that's the thing, obviously, because obviously with Instagram and stuff now, they can see the lives that they can have. If that makes sense. Obviously, yeah. when we was playing, we wasn't focused on that. But now, obviously, you see the youngsters. Everyone wants to be. Sancho, Sterling, them players there. So, and I feel like England are producing better players. So I think they, it's good to see. Yeah, I mean, you can see it from the coaching, even at grassroots. So, where you come back to myself and all the way at grassroots level, we try to replicate academy football. So it's almost yeah. like it's almost like more players are getting. I'm not saying I'm a I'm a fully fledged academy and I know what the academy coaches know or anything like that. But I've got enough experience in the game. I've learned from the right coaches to implement a lot of what yeah. academies do. In, in, so basically what I found was is that there was a big gap between grassroots and academy. And the grassroots boys could never break in properly unless they had the raw talent. They couldn't break yeah. in because they didn't understand the magnitude of where they were going. Yeah, and, and then they would always get knocked back again. And after, after doing a little bit of research and stuff, I was like, well, in order for them to, in order for us to bridge that gap, we need to be doing what the academies are doing. So yeah, we need to be as ruthless yeah, we need to be as ruthless. We need to be as cutthroat. We need to be like, and at the same time, we need to nurture them as well. So after doing that, in a couple of years, you start to see more players find their success and more players find their feet and move on to bigger and better things. But they're young. Yeah, and just as your story shows, like anything can happen. You know? Yeah. It's it, even, twist and turn. That's what I say. Yeah. Even if you are a million pound player, buckle up, sit down and get ready to work because the journey that, still the, 100%, yeah 100% that's, that's the thing even though you've been bought for that you, this, you still there's so much more hard work to do there's so much people's dis, um, opinions on you decisions on you every every year um, it, it can change so I feel like once you've achieved something you have to kick on again kick on again kick on again until you don't want to play anymore I think that's, that's the way it should be so all the way up to you retire basically then. yeah so that, that's this Definitely. is it that, that's, that's brilliant because being a professional footballer, I think youngsters 
will take more heed to what you say. Naturally, a anyone yeah. would. Um, and like I said, playing at Bottle Wanderers, to put that to the side for a second, young people, I'm talking to the young people now, put that to the side for a second. Think about, yeah. think about representing England at 15, 16, 17, 19. Think about being bought by Chelsea, playing for Sheffield United, going and getting appearances in the Champions League. Even if it's just one, how many <laughs> of us want to have one appearance in the Champions League? Do you understand? Yeah. Champions yeah, League no, nights no. is what we all live for. So, <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so, you know, you being there, being on that pitch on, in the Champions League game, hats off to you. I have to say that to you. Hats off to thank you. Thank you, thank you. And then going to get appearances, Championship, League One, League Two, you're doing your thing. You know, you, 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 you. You, you've had a fantastic career. Whatever anyone says, you've had a fantastic career. Could it have been better? Yeah, Obviously, that's <laughs> That's for, for you to answer, but like we said, right in, in the middle of the convo, hindsight is one of those things. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Isn't it? That's that's the thing. You can look back and say, "Oh, I should have done this." Should it's one of the things. And I, I feel like you have to take the journey, which way it comes. Do you know what I mean? You have to enjoy it as well. And me being honest, uh, probably when I played in League Two for Mansfield last season was the my favorite my favorite season. You know, the the team spirit we had, the football that we played was 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 good. So I feel like if a player is at a big club and they get knocked back. They still shouldn't think. Ah, oh, they should just enjoy enjoy, enjoy playing and, and see where it takes them. Hundred percent, hundred percent. That's 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 brilliant advice there, um, Jacob. It's been a pleasure having you on. Uh, no a pleasure diving into your journey a little bit, finding out more about you. And like I said, I'll be a fan. I'm sure after this, you'll have more fans um, <laughs> because that's what we do. What I'll do is I'll put your socials down there, um, so guys can come and follow you watch your journey I do have to ask what are your immediate plans for the future like I know I know you said you want to crack on till, you, till as long as you can but is there yeah. something in your mind that you want to set yourself a goal or target or achieve so maybe in like five years time I can drop your message and say remember when you told me you wanted to do this well done you yeah no I I am um, I enjoy um spotting talent to be honest um, okay. um youngsters it I always so say like um when when they academy boys come up to train with us like I can always tell who could be you know top, a top player I remember like John Stones um, he, he as soon as he trained with us you knew he's going to be he's going to be a top player just stuff like that so I always like to spot the, the young talent so something something to do with that I would, I would really like to do brilliant so maybe coaching maybe scouting maybe who yeah. knows Maybe coming to work with me and building an academy in Nottingham. Who knows? Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always looking to find players, but I'm like that. I'm like yourself. I like the art of the game. Yeah, uh, definitely. I don't really like playing. So you'd have to kind of force me to put a pair of boots on and play the game. Yeah. I'm happy to demonstrate, but that's as far as I go. Nothing more. <laughs> I love coaching. I, love the, I just love the art of it. Like, uh, yeah. Understanding the technical side and technical side and, and doing analysis. So, you know, I do a lot of analysis at uh, Billericay. Um, so I look at the opposition and trying to figure out how to beat an opposition and then pulling it off. I think that's my that's my yeah, hat trick yeah. at a world club. That's my buzz, basically. <laughs> yeah. So everyone's got their own buzz. But now I really, really I really do respect what you're doing. At the end of the day, oh, man. you know. Oh, man. After now getting to know you, I can understand. Yeah. Some of the stuff because it's easy that's, to read. It's easy to yeah. Read. That's that that that's the thing. Obviously, people. But a lot of fans judge and judge me and say, "Oh, he's a bad person. He's this. He's done this. He's done that." But until they spoke to me and like obviously understand certain things that I've been through, and and so they they can never they can never tell. That's why I like doing stuff like this, to be honest. Mm. Nah, and it's been a pleasure having you. And you know, if we can get you on another day, maybe on a chosen subject matter, maybe talking about you know the effects of being an academy player, whatever it is. You know, we can talk. We yeah. go back and forth. I've got your number now. We can we go back and forth, and uh, we'll I'll definitely stay in touch with you. Top, but till then stay make sure you stay safe make sure you keep working hard when you're back like i said we'll keep we'll keep supporting you um Cheers. guys his socials are down there you guys know what to do like share subscribe um i'll see you guys in a couple of days for another episode jacob thank you very much once again Top, man. guys no problem. Then, peace